Hello, my Storytime friends. Thank you for joining me today for Storytime with the Rockbridge Regional Library in Lexington. My name is Miss Wendy, and I am so happy to have you here. Do me a favor. See if you can type or one of your caregivers can type your name in the comments. I would love to say hello to you directly, especially when we sing our hello song. So let's see. Um, let's get started. We've got a lot to cover today. So we're going to do our hello song. First thing we do is we say hello. That's how you say hello in sign language. And friends, you have two friends and they're going to hug. And that's friends. And then it's time to say hello. Okay, we'll do it twice. Here we go. One, two, three. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello. Let's do it again. And now I'm going to put some names in there just for the fun of it. Hello, Emmett. Hello, Finn. Hello, Jacob. It's time to say hello. I would love to say hello to you too. So we are getting ready for Thanksgiving. Now everybody says, well, what are you thankful for? What are you thankful for? Sometimes, is that hard to figure out? What, what do you, so we're going to talk about what it means to be thankful in different ways we can be thankful. But before we get started, we need to warm up. Now, I'm going to move my camera back so that I have space. So where you are, make sure you have space too. So yesterday I mentioned our story time pouches. Again, if you're interested in one of these, just let me know in the comments and I'll put one at the whole desk. There's all kinds of fun things in here like rhythm sticks and an egg shaker. And today we're going to use a beautiful scarf. So here is my scarf. So if you have a scarf at home, you would want to grab that. If you don't, you can grab a dish towel. You can grab a hand towel. You could grab a t-shirt. You could grab your socks. You could grab your brother's socks. You can grab anything that kind of flows. And we're gonna wave our scarves together, okay? So get your scarves or your socks, whatever to get. If you have two, you can do two hands. Okay, let's sing the song together. One, two, three. We wave our scarves together. We wave our scarves together. We wave our scarves together because it's fun to do. It is. What should we do next? Let's throw our scarves in the air. We'll toss them. We toss our scarves in the air. We toss our scarves in the air. We toss our scarves in the air because it's fun to do. And now a favorite, of course, is we're gonna play peekaboo with our scarves. Are you ready? We play peekaboo with our scarves. We play peekaboo. Peekaboo with our scarves. Play peekaboo with our scarves because it's fun to do. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty fun. All right. Now, if we have pulled out scarves or shirts or socks, it's time to put them away. We put our scarves away. We put our scarves away. We put our scarves away because it's nice to do. Very good. Okay, I feel good and warmed up and ready to read. But first, let's get our deep breathing because it's always good to get some oxygen in your body and in your brain. So let's take some deep breaths. We'll put our first finger and thumb together and a deep breath in and out. Middle finger and thumb. Deep breath in, deep breath out, all the way out. Ring finger and thumb, deep breath in, deep breath out. Pinky and thumb, deep breath in, deep breath out. 
the thumbs up because you're feeling good. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. That's good to do multiple times in the day. It just kind of takes a second and you feel better. You always feel better after doing some deep breathing. So that leaves only one thing, of course. Are you ready for a story? And or are you ready to give thanks? All right, we're gonna start with if you're ready for a story. Okay, one, two, three. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. You guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I try so hard on this ukulele, I don't always do it, but I'm going to keep trying. Now this time, instead of saying, if you're ready for a story, stomp your feet, let's sing, if you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet. Okay, you ready? If you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're thankful and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're thankful and you know it, stomp your feet. Okay, so we'll go back to if you're ready for a story and we'll sit real still. Okay? If you're ready for a story, sit real still, then we freeze. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, sit real still. See how long you can hold it. Oh, I can't hold it any longer. That's it. <laughs> it's hard to stay still. Okay, should we see what books we have today? Let's see. What do we have? Oh, yes. Got some interesting ones today. Good. But the first one, you may have heard this story before. Maybe you haven't. This is a book called Stone Soup. This is a classic book to read at Thanksgiving. So let's see what it's all about. Stone Soup, and this version is by John J. Muth. It's retold and illustrated. That means he has written the words and done the pictures by John J. Muth. And it's brought to us by Scholastic Press. Three monks, Hawk, Locke, and Sue, traveled along a mountain road. They talked about cat whiskers, the color of the sun, and giving. What makes one happy, Sue? asked Hawk, the youngest monk. Old Sue, who was the wisest, said, let's find out. The sound of a bell brought their gaze to the rooftops of a village below. They could not see from so high above the village, and the village had been there through many hard times. Famine, floods, war had made the villagers weary and untrusting of strangers. They had even become suspicious of their neighbors. Okay, so there's a little town below. The villagers worked hard but only for themselves. There was a farmer, there was a scholar, there was a tea merchant, there was a seamstress, somebody who sews, there was a doctor, there was a carpenter, and many others, but they had little to do with one another. When the monks reached the foot of the mountain, the villagers disappeared into their houses. No one came to the gates to greet them. And when people saw them enter the village, they closed their windows tight. The monks knocked on the door of the first house. There was no answer. Then the house went dark. 
They knocked on a second door and the same thing happened. It happened again and again from one house to the next. These people do not know happiness, they all agreed. But today, said Sue, his face bright as the moon, we will show them how to make stone soup. Ooh. They gathered twigs and branches and made a fire. They placed a small tin pot on top and filled it with water from the village well. A brave little girl who had been watching came to them. What are you doing? she asked. We're gathering twigs, said Locke. We are making a fire, said Hawk. We are making stone soup, and we need three round, smooth stones, said Sue. The little girl helped the monks look around the courtyard until they found just the right ones. Then they put them in the water to cook. These stones will make excellent soup, said Sue, but this very small pot won't make much, I'm afraid. My mother has a bigger pot, said the girl. The little girl ran home. As she started to take a pot, her mother asked what she was doing. The three strangers are making soup from stones, she said. They need our biggest pot. Hmm, said the girl's mother. Stones are easy to come by. I'd like to learn how to do that. The monks poked the coals. As smoke drifted up, the neighbors peered out from their windows. The fire and the large pot in the middle of the village was a true curiosity. That means they were very curious about what was going on in the village. One by one, the people of the village came out to see just what this stone soup was. Of course, old style stone soup should be well seasoned with salt and pepper. That is true, said Locke as he stirred the giant pot filled with water and stones. But we have none. I have some salt and pepper, said the scholar, his eyes big with curiosity. There he is. <clears throat> he disappeared and came back with salt and pepper and even a few other spices. Sue took a taste. The last time we had stone soup of this size and color, carrots made the broth very sweet. Carrots, said the woman from the back. I may have a few carrots, but just a few. And off she ran. She returned with as many carrots as she could carry and dropped them into the pot. Do you think it would be better with onions? asked Hawk. Oh yes, maybe an onion would taste good said the farmer, and he hurried off. He returned in a moment with five big onions, and he dropped them into the bubbling soup. Now that's a fine soup, he said. The villagers all nodded their heads, as the smell was very agreeable. But only if we had some mushrooms, said Sue, rubbing his chin. Several villagers licked their lips. A few dashed away and returned with fresh mushrooms, noodles, Pea, pat, pea pods and cabbages. There they are. Something magical began to happen among the villagers. As each person opened their heart to give, the next person gave even more. And as this happened, the soup grew richer and smelled more delicious. I imagine the emperor would suggest we add dumplings, said one villager. And bean curd, said another. What about cloud ear or mung beans or yams, cried some villagers. And taro root, a winter melon and baby corn, cried other villagers. Garlic, ginger root, soy sauce, lily buds. I have some, I have some, people cried, and off they ran, returning with all they could carry. The monks stirred and the pot bubbled. How good it smelled. How good it would taste. How giving the villagers had become. Oh, look at that. There they all are. At last, the soup was ready. The villagers gathered together. They brought rice and steamed buns. 
They brought lychee nuts and sweet cakes. They brought tea to drink and lit lanterns. Everyone sat down to eat. They had not been together for a feast like this for as long as anyone could remember. And there's the big spark. After the banquet, they told stories and sang songs and celebrated long into the night. Then they unlocked their doors and took the monks into their homes and gave them very comfortable places to sleep. Look, in the gentle spring morning, everyone gathered together near the will willows to say farewell. Thank you for having us as your guests, said the monks. You have been most generous. Thank you, said the villagers. With the gifts you have given, we will always have plenty. You have shown us that sharing makes us all richer. And there it is, the moral. And to think, said the monks, to be happy is as simple as making soup. Isn't that nice? The end. Cat's like, where's my soup? <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that. And it, and it really does remind us that happiness comes with giving. And this is a perfect time of year to do some giving of your own. So before we get too much further, I want to sing a song for you guys. This is a song about stone soup. Let's see if together we can fill this pot. And then we can all have a lot. So this song is sung to the tune of... London Bridge is falling down. And here's how it goes. Heat some water in a pot. Add a stone you've scrubbed a lot. Here's our stone. Sprinkle pepper, salt, and herbs. Let it boil undisturbed. Okay, so let's add some salt and some pepper. And some herbs. That means stuff from the garden. Like thyme and rosemary and sage. Drop in carrots, onions too. Let the soup heat through and through. There's our carrots and our onion. Now we're going to stir in the milk. Stir in milk to make it sweet. Add potatoes for a treat. There's our potatoes. Toss in ham bones, let it stew. Let it bubble, let it brew. Taste the soup and when it's done, share stone soup with everyone. Look at that. Our soup is full and there's not just a rock in it, which is excellent. Here are the words in case you want to learn at home. All right. Okay, so shall we see what book is next? Oh, yes. Bear Says Thanks. Now, this is a sweet little book about how we can be there for each other. Let's see what this is all about. Bear Says Thanks. Thanks. And this is by Karma Wilson and Jane Chapman. Look, there's his little feet sticking out of the den. And this comes to us from Margaret K. McElderberry Books. McElderry Books, excuse me. All alone in his cave, Bear listens to the wind. He is bored, 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 and he misses his friends. I could make a big dinner, uh, a feast I could share. But he looks through his cupboard, and the cupboard is bare. Then Mouse stops by with a huckleberry pie. And the bear says, thanks. Well, that was nice. Bear says, 
goodness me, a delectable pie. But I have made nothing, he adds with a sigh. <clears throat> then, they, then they hear, hi-ho, and they both see hair with a big batch of muffins at the door of the lair. Ooh. Hare hurries in from the cold, rushing wind, and the bear says, thanks. Of course, says Hare. Then he points to the door. Here comes Badger. He's got even more. What does he have? Fish. <gasps> Brrr, says Badger, as he tromps inside. He sets down his pole and he smiles real wide. I'm back from a stroll at the old fishing hole. And Bear says, thanks. Then Gopher and Mole tunnel up from the ground. We have warm honey nuts. Let's pass them around. Ooh. There's a flap and a flitter and a flurry in the den when in flutters Owl with Raven and Wren. Here they come. We have pears from the tree and herbs to brew tea. And Bear says, wait. Bear mutters and he stutters and he wears a big frown. Bear sighs. Oh, and he moans, and he plops himself down. You have brought yummy treats. You are so nice to share. But me, I have nothing. My cupboards are bare. Mouse squeaks, don't fret. There's enough, dear bear. You don't need any food. You have stories to share. His friends hug him tight. It'll be all right. And Bear says, thanks. They lay out their feast on a quilt on the ground, and the bear takes a seat while his friends gather round. In a cave in the woods, in a warm, bright lair, the friends feel grateful for their good friend Bear. They pass around platters, they tweet, and they chatter. And they all say thanks. Look at that. They, this is kind of like stone soup because everybody brought a little something to share. And by doing that, they had plenty. All right. That's a very sweet book. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, I was wondering, would you friends like to learn how to make a turkey finger puppet? I think it's a good idea. Look at this guy. I'll put him on for you. Look at that guy. I'm a turkey big and fat. And when I walk, I walk like that. All year long, my corn I do not miss. And when I talk, I talk like this. Gobble, gobble, gobble. <laughs> exactly. Don't you want to make one of those guys? So why don't you come over here? Let's, I will show you how to make a turkey finger puppet. So here's how you do it. All you're going to need is some construction paper, a little piece of brown. It's a couple reds, a couple oranges, a couple yellows, cut into the shape of feathers. Of course, you can use other colors. It doesn't have to be these colors. You'll need a little piece of yellow triangle for the beak. And this funny little red shape is for the wattle. Now you're going to want some tape, scissors, a glue stick. And if you have googly eyes, two googly eyes. If you don't have googly eyes, not to worry. All you need is a black marker or pen. Okay, so here's how you do it. First, you're going to take your brown sheet and you're going to roll it into a tube and then tape it together. 
So here I've got a little tube. And now I'm going to put a piece of tape right there. Okay, there's the front. Now we kind of want to take the two corners and fold it down. And then you're going to fold it one more time. I'll do it a little bit more. Right there. And then another piece of tape. You're going to want to make sure that fold stays folded. So I like using tape. So there's my finger puppet. Now next we're going to work on putting the feathers on. So the first thing to do is grab your glue stick. And you're going to put glue all over the back of it. The tape, the construction paper, all of it. Now I started mine with a yellow in the middle. And then I put a couple oranges on either side. And I put a little bit more. Whoop, bound to happen. And I'm going to put a little bit more glue on those back two so that I can add in my red. Okay, I'll turn them over. Look at that! Now we need to put the eyes on. So we'll take our glue stick again, go right across the top. You might want to put a little extra glue there on the back. You know, and of course you've got your tape right there, so you can always just tape it, which I might go ahead and do. Now we're going to put the eyeballs on, so a little bit more glue. Where'd my eyeballs go? There they are. One and two. And then next, let's do the beak and the wattle. So I like to put the wattle on first. It's a rather big one for this little guy, but that's okay. And then the triangle. The beak. And there you have it. Finger puppets. Turkey finger puppets. I mean, look how cute they are. Ah, my turkey making fat. And you can make these at home. If you do make any at home, send me a picture. I'd love to see your turkey finger puppets. Okay, let's go see what is next to read is our final book of today. Now this book is called The Thank You Book. I thought this would be a good one to read because sometimes you may say, well, what do I have to be thankful for? You may, you know, and you can be thankful for so many things. And that's what this book is about. And it's by, oh, I'm sorry, I can't see the author name. Ryan, it's covered up, I'm so sorry. I'll look on the inside by Mary Lynn Ray, and it's illustrated by Stephanie Gregan. Illustrations are absolutely beautiful. And it comes to us from Houghton Mifflin Harcourt. Thank you isn't just for learning manners. It's also for when something wakes a little hum, a happy little hum inside you, and you want to answer back. So when the sun brings a new day, thank you is for morning. Another is for a cup and a plate. Thank you is for buzz and bloom and grass and toes and all that makes us wonder. Kind of like how did that duck get a hat and sweater and necklace on? <laughs> And it's, besides, for swings and slides. Thank you is for glue and glitter. And for learning something new. It's for parades. Love, choose kindness, peace. And it's for puddles. Thank you is for laps and books. It's for having birthdays and for birthday cake. It's also for when hurt or sad. 
or not so good gets better. It's for zippers and zip jackets. When warm days turn to cold, that's like now. And for the year's surprises before green days come back. Thank you is for hats and mittens. It's for hands to hold. Thank you is for family. Thank you is for home. It's for this earth we ride on and for the stars beyond. Thank you is for bathtub boats and for bubble bath. It's for pajamas and more stories. And for go to sleep now kisses. We all know those. Then in the dark, it's for a light. And for knowing morning will come after night. It's for what we give a name to and for what we can't. Still, it's all we feel inside us, what makes us glad that we are us. So, for what's big and for what's small, and all that's in between, every day or special day, we wrap a hug around each day to say another thank you. The end. Well, friends, I would like to thank you for being part of story time with me. I am very thankful. I am very thankful to have you here. So until we won't have any programming next week, the week of Thanksgiving, but we will pick it up again the following Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. As always, I will be here for more stories, music, and fun. <laughs> so until then, don't forget this weekend, or next, sorry, on Thanksgiving, to wash your hands, especially before you eat. All right, you ready for tops and bottoms before we go? Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together. Now they're clean, squeaky clean. Again, tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together. Now they're clean, squeaky clean. Okay, friends, until the week after Thanksgiving, I will see you later, alligator, in a wild crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug. Blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, big baboon, out the door, dinosaur, take care, polar bear, <laughs> wave goodbye, butterfly, happy Thanksgiving, my friends, have a great one, bye.